What's going on guys? So, this is one of those videos that wasn't supposed to be. I, I've been following on Facebook and stuff. I bought some of these SCX-10 3 Broncos. Um, yeah, just to try and sell and help raise some money for the channel and stuff. And uh, yeah, they're not selling. The economy's junk right now and nobody has spare money. So, I've been sitting there staring. I've got three left. <laughs> well, now two. Decided to keep one. And I, I, mean, I have this bittersweet relationship with Axial. I loved my Axial Dingo back in the day, the SCX-10-1, and uh, yeah, got a Gladiator, and it was good, it just, I didn't like the portals, the portals bugged me, so Axial Fest this year, I bought a Capra, and the rest is history, Capra melting uh, dig servos non-stop the entire event, didn't run, so got rid of that, so here I am, stuck with a handful of Axial SCX-10-3 Broncos, and uh, yeah, finally got desperate enough to crack one open. Our internet's been out here today. So, I was like, you know what? Let's just see. Out of the box, a couple issues. I had a fender flare that was already ripped off the body. Uh, the body had been jostled around, I guess, in shipping. And, uh, yeah, a couple little issues like that. Fixed it, no big deal. So, uh, first thing I did was peel the stickers. We'll get a better look at that later. Because, I, I, like I said, I wasn't film, planning on filming any of this. It was just going to be... Tinkering around with it and seeing what we could do, but pulled the stickers off and it looked it was, it was hiding a lot of detail with those ugly pinstripes. And so I've been trying to test fit a driver. We got Woody here from Cheers. This is uh, what's his name? I don't remember his name. <laughs> he doesn't fit very good either. But we put a new seat in. What do you get out of there? And uh, that's why I had to start filming because I just had a real man of genius moment with some zip ties. This is the seat that comes in it. Super low back. It's very solid chunk of plastic. I'm really surprised it's as thick as it is. It's a lot of weight, a lot of manufacturing costs for Axial, but anytime you have an Axial rig with a dig servo, you gotta make sure you have lots of fire extinguishers handy. And we're gonna actually mount one in the truck. I found that. This is one of the scale things I bought back in the day off of uh, eBay that was supposed to be 10 scale, and it is large. But we need that with this rig, because it's Axial electronic. So, uh, pulled this seat out. It, this will be handy for a rat rod or something, maybe. It just a uh, sticker. Yeah, no, not digging the stickers on these. This body actually has a ton of detail. It, that pinstripe is hiding this body line, and this color doesn't look as atrocious without a flat gray body stripe. I don't know. It, I don't know what they were thinking. But seats aren't going to work. Driver wouldn't fit. He's probably still not going to fit. He's not that big of a guy, but he's proportionate to the vehicle, and... Yeah, trying to make it work. So I found some seats. I was digging through boxes. These are old, uh, I almost said Capra. What was before the Capra? Wraith. These are Wraith seats. And I got excited. The back holes are the same width as the ones on this, but the front ones are wider on here. And, uh, yeah, the mounting points didn't line up, and it just didn't jive right on this body. So they're a little small, too. They look a little small on this. This is a big truck, and that's part of the reason I wanted to open one is to see what other bodies might fit on it, and I have nothing that'll fit. This thing is ginormous. This is probably one ninth scale, if I had, you know, comparatively to RC four wheel drive stuff that I have. So, that led me to dig deeper in my boxes of junk. If you've been in a hobby for 15 years, you'll know what these are. <laughs> these are RC four wheel drive's first scale seats. These probably came out around 08, maybe, maybe before then. Um, Luckily, I've had a mystery box back in the day. I, I got one seat. It was red and black, and I've had nothing to put it in for years. And uh, I finally, I broke down and I bought another red and black seat. These are rubber, and I painted them. And it's been 10 years, and those are still tacky to the touch. And I still have them. I painted them brown, tried to do a Hilux interior. Didn't work. So somehow I've acquired a set of black ones. And like I said, they're rubber, and they have no mounts, no way to mount them. You have this grid on the bottom. And these seats mount with four screws. So I don't want to hack. I don't want to do a whole bunch of mess with this. But I've made it work. And just in case anybody was wondering. My buddy Rob made me this casket. This is where I keep my burned up axial dig servos. Look at that. Melted through the bottom of it. So I will say while we're here. I, I love my gladiator. Hated the portals. I have an actual gladiator in real life. They don't come with portals. So that's part of the reason I went ahead and bought these kits, because they're non-portal trucks. Man, I don't, I'm don't. i not a big Ford guy. I'm not a big early Bronco guy. 
I like old stuff. I appreciate it. I'm not a brand snob. Obviously, I'm, I grew up a Chevy guy, but I got a Jeep. I don't have a Chevy right now. So it's not, you know, live or die by <laughs> whatever brand. But uh, the chassis is great. I love these chassis. I love my original SCX-10. I built that Dingo kit back in the day. And, uh, yeah, I love what they've done with moving the transmission and having this kind of a scale transmission, motor in the front, weight distribution, the inner fenders. It feels great. The tires are great. The wheels actually don't look bad. They're not, I don't think you'd really want to run three-spoke spinners on your rock crawler, but whatever. Float your boat. Um, it's just the electronics that I've had issues with, and I never had an issue with my Gladiator, and I sold that to 110 Rod Shop. I think we traded on something. But, yeah, that's hopefully this is better than what was in that Capra. Um, it's got the same dig servo, so we'll see how it holds up, but I like this, and they've actually upgraded the engine cover on this. It is a uh, Coyote motor, and it does have both valve covers, unlike the other <laughs> CX-10-3s. It just had one. So looking underneath, taking out the screws of the other seat, we've got zip tie-ins. And this seat, like I said, has no mounts. We just have this weird grid of rubber things. So what I'm doing is I'm drilling holes in the front and in the back, just hacking holes in it with a drill, putting zip ties through, and then feeding them through the holes, and then putting new zip ties on the bottom to hold it. Works great. The other seat is in there perfectly flat to the floor. It's tight, it doesn't wobble, doesn't move. And yeah, it ain't going nowhere. So I'll show you a little bit of how to do this. Just got my standard, this is 1 8 I think. Standard fits all M3 hardware pretty much. I've had to replace that drill bit several times. I'm gonna do some holes in here. Just trying to get them down deep enough to where they'll actually bite into the rubber and do some in the middle. Give it a little more support. All right, so here's what we got. Got the zip ties fed through the middle, outward and down front and back. Now we're going to feed all four of these through the holes in the body and we're just going to put zip ties on the back and clip it all down. Alright, so here's what we got. Seat's just dangling. It's going to go where it's going to go and there's no way it can get out of it so we ain't going to worry about nothing. Just pull things up tight. It's going to line itself up with these four holes. Try to get them as tight as I can by hand. And then we'll crank them down with the cutters. I'm not going to cut that all the way down, just we have a little extra hanging out there on the back side to hold it in place. Cut that one. Pull it nice and tight. And we'll just force that other zip tie down. Snip, snip. Oh, now you don't want to snip. And we're done. Much improvement. These seats were nice that they made. They were just too low-backed. You don't have a low-back bucket seat when you have an entire full cage, tube doors, twin stick, and sheet metal interior. Sorry. <laughs> it's just not plausible. And in real life, this truck probably wouldn't be a manual transmission, but I'll dig it. I like manuals, so we'll roll with that. They actually fit pretty good. I've been looking for a use for these seats for the better part of a decade, so yeah, I'm digging it. Um, I don't think it's going to help our driver fit any better. He was already too tall. Um, these seats are kind of narrow. They are wider than the Wraith seats, but he's got some childbirth and hips, and he's just not going to fit, I don't think. Put it out already. The grill was bowed out on the ends. The ends of it were flared out, so I took it off, tried to bend it. I was thinking about maybe painting the uh, blinker lights, but they're glued in, and I don't want to paint them on the outside. I want to paint them on the inside, paint them orange. And I tried pushing on it. I could hear it start to crack. I'm like, nope, we're not going to do that. I don't want to mess them up. So I've been sitting here just kind of bending this thing a little bit on the ends, trying to get it to fit flush on the front of this body. If uh, we have to, we can throw some two-sided tape, get some of that carpet tape on the ends, because it's really only supported in the middle. But some of this stuff I am surprised by. This this is some robust stuff. This radiator is your front body mount and your light holder and everything. 
it's pretty solid stuff. I, I am impressed with that. I like the quality of the lenses and uh, the grill and stuff. It looks good. It's just, again, just a little haphazardly assembled, I guess, would be the right way to say it. So I think I may try to paint the Ford and the grill. All right, so I've got my Molotov chrome pen. It's been a little separated lately. I'm not sure what is up with that. I've been shaking it for a little bit. Um, I don't have a white paint pen. It's in my toolbox and my storage unit. I remember now. So, oh well, just a little splash of something will make this look good. So I'm not totally hating this thing anymore. It it's starting to grow on me. Posted a picture on Instagram last night and Facebook. Everybody's like, you need to lower it. You need to lower it. So I may look into some ways of lowering it a little bit. I don't want to change too much till we drive it and get to see, you know, how it actually is. I don't want to put the cart before the horse and start making major changes. There we go. All right, this is coming out much better now. Hopefully it'll look good. Forward. Yeah, but it's, some of the stuff, the quality of this body is good. I just, again, I'm not a big Lexan guy, but I, I get it. I mean, it's what we've always had. And somebody commented, it's all the vintage Tamiya stuff I've got. and must be coming around to Lexan. It's like, no, because most of those bodies I got were built by somebody else. They were painted by somebody else. That's part of the reason I bought them, because Lord knows I'd probably just mess it up. That looks pretty good. I'm going to let that dry for a bit. I don't want to overdo it. We've already got chrome around the, the headlights and the blinkers coming through. I'm not going to do any extra on the plastic part itself. But we'll let that dry. Throw the front end back together. I'm probably going to go ahead and put some of that carpet tape on the corners of this. And, uh, yeah, see what we can do next. Alright, so if you didn't see the Sin Racing video, carpet tape. It's used to repair carpet, glue pieces together. It's super, super thin. It's got some woven texture in it to add it, give it strength. And, uh, yeah, extremely sticky, two-sided. So I'm just going to cut some little triangles and stick them in the corner and cut nice little triangles. Happy little triangles. <laughs> Bob would be proud. Just going to start sticking them. <laughs> Still let that paint dry, but I ain't going to wait on it all day. All right, got the grill all back together. On to the next thing. Um, I'm going to mount the fire extinguisher in there between the seats on the kind of behind the console. And we're just going to, this is a, I don't even know if this was a Proline one or something. This came on one of those little scale accessory sets. Just found it in my junk bin. So we're going to mount it in there. I'm just going to drill two holes. Try to line up with these mounting tabs, mounting pegs. And we're just going to stick it through those holes. See if it stays. We'll add some hot glue on the back. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Um, got a smaller drill bit. Pretty close to the size of those. And I'm just going to eyeball it and drill it from the bottom because it's real tricky to get in there from the top. Want it a little bit further forward. Want it pretty well centered. All right, pretty happy with that spot. I think those aren't really sticking through the bottom any, just barely. I mean, we could might throw some glue on there. Best option is just going to be cut a sliver of that thin tape and put it on the bottom of the mount, line it up with the pegs. This kind of snaps in. Tape will hold it the rest of the way. All right, just stuck a little square in the middle of this. You can get it to peel. And that stuff is super thin. It's going to work great. So I could open the door. It is kind of cool these doors open. I didn't realize they actually were hinged. Hold it from underneath. I ain't going nowhere. I tried to slam the door. It didn't work. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to do the free lowering mod. Uh, everybody was talking about it where we just moved the shock from the upper mount down here to our lower four link mount. Um, I'm using a three mil spacer. It seems to give the shock all the clearance it needs. On the outside of that, mount the shock. I uh, didn't have any longer bolts that were standard, so I'm going to have to use scale hardware, unfortunately. But it should uh, give us the space we need. And also, that puts it on axial build quality. I can't get the wheel nuts off this front axle. They are torqued on so tight that even with my driver I could not get that out I took the spinner off and yeah I just can't grip this enough I'm gonna have to get some pliers and vice grips and <laughs> yeah it's on there snug so hopefully we don't break the front axle but I'm gonna do the rest of these um, it's real easy 
So if we can see that one there I've already done. Just a little three mil spacer, longer bolt. They all share one mount. We'll see if it works. I mean, it looks like under full articulation, it's just not quite rubbing the inner fender. So it should be perfect. All right guys, so that's the new ride height. Looks pretty good. Made a world of difference. May have to play with the shocks a little bit, but not getting much rubbing. I think, uh, I think I'm happy with that. I was afraid the tires were going to be too big once we lowered it down, but it's looking pretty good. So, only thing left is to try to drive this thing, but... Alright guys, I think I'm about ready to wrap this one up. Not a whole lot of places to crawl out here. Uh, I still don't have a place. I haven't got to set up a new shop or anything yet since we quit our job and went full time. But <laughs> doing the best we can with what we got. i starting to like this thing more and more. Um, yeah, it's, it is what it is. The dig servo didn't burn up. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. The electronics on this are different than the Capra. And remember I had the Gladiator before, the, the 10 3 Gladiator with this all-in-one receiver radio ESC thing. And I never had any trouble with that. It's just, I've just bought a dud capper, I guess, but yeah. <laughs> After dealing with that, it just left such a bad taste in my mouth about Axial. But I don't know. I'm still kind of on the fence about it. It's a good truck. It, it, it's got a good all-around speed. The servo is good. Um, lowered it, looks pretty good. We've got a few details. It's, it's not bad for Lexan. We've got a lot of stuff going on. Getting those pinstripes off, all the stickers really made it look a lot more realistic to me. But I put some license plates on it, some D rings on the front that I had laying around, just little things. Painted the chrome on the emblem, the Ford, the fire extinguisher, and the new seats. <laughs> but I don't know. It's everything with Axial always leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And I I posted some stuff of this on Instagram and Facebook, and then somebody's wanted to run their mouth about how I don't know what I'm talking about and. Axial's the best engineered vehicles in the world and everybody copies them and it's just I don't need all that I'm just trying to have fun with a truck and I have a legitimate reason to not like Axial um, I like the truck Thinking we can do some more stuff to it. I'm looking CC hand has a lot of scale items RC4 drive is out of stock on a lot of them, but they have some mirrors that bolt on and stuff like that um, I had some kind of metal hard top, but I think we could make us a little cover pretty easy for that little bikini top um, I actually have one for that RC four-wheel drive cross-country truck that it's no longer made I might could repurpose that on here I'll have to see but all around it's it's a pretty good truck I don't like I like the body mounts how they're hidden and everything but taking the body on and off is a pain in the butt it, it's same as it was on the gladiator the inner fenders catch on your fender flare bolt so you've got to try to push all that through and while getting the body behind this uh, rocker guard which isn't as hard as the gladiator the gladiator one fit way too tight but i got out there and i realized that this side i didn't even get that on the outside because i was too busy trying to get this fender flare to disconnect from the inner fender but it is what it is it's i mean looking back the it, i had an scx 10 dingo kit back in the day one of the first you know the first platform scx and i love that thing i you know I, it wasn't there wasn't as much scale stuff back then. 
So that was just Lexan body and it had kind of an interior. It wasn't nearly as in-depth as this one, but it was a great performing truck. And I can't argue with that. They still, this chassis is awesome. Um, I like that it has a dig and a two-speed. I wish they would both function. You know, you could do that on the fly, but all you got to do is add a servo, which, you know, I'm not going to add one of their servos because the only ones I have of those are burned, but <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it's a pretty good all-around truck. And this, like I said, the steering servo in this feels great. I have no complaints about that. They're a little noisy, but it has absolutely plenty of torque. Not worried about that at all. The body looks a million times better without the stickers. And I, I appreciate all the scale details. We've got the doors, the roll bar, the little guards up here. We've got the grill and the lights and the lights and stuff, too. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. So, I don't totally hate it. I'm not hating on Axial, but I just had a bad experience and... Yeah, if you had a bad experience, you wouldn't buy one too. That's why a lot of people don't buy Ford or Chevy, because they've had a bad experience with one or the other. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm a red cat fanboy, jeez. <laughs> Internet needs a chill. But, uh, I don't know. I dig it. I like it. The tires, the wheels, feels good. Would like to do some different tire. I don't. These aren't really a very aggressive looking tire. They perform good. They're nice and grippy. No complaints with that, but just for looks, for appearances, so... Anyways, comment below with what tire and wheel and what you've done with your Bronco, because I'm curious to see. That was neat to see on Facebook when I posted the pictures of this with and without the stickers. A lot of people were posting up their builds and what they've done. Some of them were lifted. Some of them were even stretched, which was actually pretty cool looking. Had a really nice stance to it. And, uh, yeah, I'd like to see what you guys do, hear your ideas on it, because I'm not an expert on axial stuff. Like I said, I haven't really done much with them. I had that Gladiator. It was great out of the box, and I didn't want to spend a bunch of money just replacing plastic with metal. So, but uh, the main thing I do like about this is the non-portal axles. That's the whole reason I sold that Gladiators because it, Gladiators don't have portals. Jeeps don't have portals in real life, and um, the scale stuff, man, I just don't want. That. <laughs> it looks silly underneath to me. And I'm a stickler for that. So, it is what it is. This is cool. Works good. Looks good. So we'll see what else we can do with this thing in the future, but. I'm going to wrap it up, guys. Appreciate y'all watching. Get out there and do something with the hobby. And keep it scale. See y'all next time.